two, three, four. Okay, so here I am back again. Uh, and I am going to say this one more time. Don't forget to subscribe to my channels on YouTube or, or Rumble. I might be on Broadcast Museum uh, in Kilgore, Texas. It's a lot bigger than I thought. I'm going to run out of battery power, but it is pretty cool. You should come check it out. Okay, so here I am inside the museum. It costs eight dollars to get in for me. So it starts out with a gift shop. A little brochure. Take one of these. Alright, walk around. Right, the lady doesn't want to be on it, so I got it. Cool. Get that light. See if I can. Very cool. Oh, wow. All right, start off as a gift shop. That's pretty cool. Watch everything. And then we have music in the background. I have no idea what it is. I didn't get banned from YouTube because of the music. Now what's that music you're playing? Wait, are you doing us a tour? Yes. Uh, yes. I'm oh. Doing a tour. And of course, most stations had cameras like this or right. like that up until the seventies, really. Mm -hmm. And a reel of that film, the, it's in those rabbit ears up on top, uh -huh. would go about eleven minutes and was two hundred dollars. So if the cameraman messed up very often, he probably didn't. Stay around too long. Yeah, yeah. Which one are we talking this thing? Yes. Oh. That was a common one used by newsrooms or anything like that. For and when was that? What years? Well, from the 40s up until the 70s, pretty much. That's when they began to get uh, videotape machines and cameras that you could carry around. And hmm. And then they came. Oh, you're on the radio. You're on the thing. I don't know. Do it. You got in here, so she didn't want to be in it, so I don't know what you feel about it. Oh, well, of course, the, when they got back to the station, most stations had some method of developing the film. Mm -hmm. And then they'd go to a splicing table like this, and they could find the scene on the film they were looking for mm -hmm. and cut it. And they put two or three sections together on a splicing machine just like this. Mm -hmm. Kind of like people used to do with 8 millimeter stuff. Right. Same thing, except that most stations use 16. And then they would play it on a unit like this. And these were common. This right here. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's it. It's a film chain. And it has... A double slide projector as well as 
two 16 millimeter projectors. And in here's a set of mirrors that slide up and down and they're pneumatically controlled. And it, to go into a camera, of course cameras were expensive in the early days. And so, especially early on, the networks maybe would send down a morning program mm -hmm. and then you might not get anything until the evening news. Mm -hmm. So for stations to put something on the air, they had to make their own. And so it was usually done in the mornings. It was cartoons for the kids and then maybe soap operas or something like that or game shows mm -hmm. or whatever. They were shown on projectors like this. Yeah. And the slide projector was used for station ID, for, you know, sometimes they could use it in commercials and different things. Also, uh, remember the slide, uh, sorry, we, for the interruption or yes. shows a little film break yeah. or something came off the slide projector. <laughs> wow. it's, what year was this? Uh, well, this would have been from the 40s all the way up to... Well, some may still use it. I mean, it's... Yeah. But if it works. Especially until videotape got big, they, this was it. Yeah. Wow. And before I miss it, there's a unit over here. This Dumont. It says Dumont on it. Yeah, this yep. paper came. Dumont was an early television manufacturer, one of the first. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was... It's hard to sell a big piece of furniture for your living room if it doesn't do something. So he ended up, he, he started a network, uh -huh. er, very early, of the Dumont network. And he also started producing studio equipment. This was the green parts of studio camera. And Jackie Gleason was one of his early really? stars. Oh. And Jackie Gleason asked him to make this. And what it is, it's an Airflex film camera, kind of mm -hmm. like this, that's grafted onto the front, and they share the optics. Mm -hmm. They have a splitter so they can send it into both. And when, because back then, a lot of the stars like to do their show live. Of course, a lot of them came from vaudeville and radio and whatever, yeah. and they, they were used to being more live in front of an audience. And Jackie Gleason liked to do his live. Well, they didn't have any way of storing it other than putting it on film. And so when it was done live up in New York, they this it was going out real time. And at first they it was just up in the northeast, but later they got to where they could send it across country. Mm -hmm. And so it was the northeast, the eastern time zone, and the Central, like we are here, but then they had to delay it two hours for the mountain and the Pacific. Right. And the only way to do it, the way they normally did it in live programs, when it was being filmed in the studio, they'd take a monitor and put a camera in front of it, basically how it all worked. Right. And record it. The problem is, it just didn't look good. It's mm -hmm. called kinescope recording, but it just didn't make a real good recording. Well, this is a regular film camera, and so when Jackie Gleason and, and several others that use the system mm -hmm. were doing their show, of course the studio would have had two or three of them, and when the camera was called, uh, the video camera was called up and sending out, going out over the air, it also ran the film camera. And then at the end, they take all that film and develop it and splice it together in the correct order and you'd have a good copy. It was just, just well it was a good copy because right. it was just regular and if you can see it because Jack, the Honeymooners is still on Yeah. and uh, at the end of it it's got a little in the credits it says filmed on the Dumont Electronic Cam TV film I'll system. I'll have to look for it because we're have still to watch watching. It. Yes, look at it. Because right? it's got kind of that thing, looks like they've got a kind of a roller shade they do at the end. Mm -hmm. And 
in one of the things in there, it says filmed on the Dumont Electronic MTV wow. film system. So you'll know where it came from. Cool. And that's yeah. why it has a better quality picture than what most did back in those days. Yeah. So was this one more um, movies? Yes. That would have been, that's similar to like what they used to film the I Love Lucy show. Oh, really? Or back in the day. Oh. It's, it's 35 millimeter, well, yes, 35 millimeter film. They would have had bigger film canisters on them because you've got to, <coughs> needed more film. And oh. of course, they would have had two or three of them and several to, in the yeah. studio to yeah. catch all of them. This unit back here, yeah. this is the first videotape machine that was available, an Ampex VR1000, and uh, it came out in 1956, and it's all the way from here to down there, wow. all this goes with it, so it was a serious machine, it was pretty much the same thing your VHS machine did, but yeah. it's... Uh, but that wow. was the first time they didn't have to use film. They could put it on videotape, and then here's a reel, which is wow. heavy. I mean, it was not. <laughs> yeah. You, it, it was a workout putting these in, on and off. But, uh, like, the bean counters loved it. Like, uh, say, the evening news up in New York. Yeah. Uh, until they had this, the only way what they had to do is they'd do the evening news for the east coast and the central mm -hmm. and then, then they have to do it again two hours later for the uh, mountain and pacific coast or pacific time zone this way they could just record it and play it two hours later so it saved paying all those people to stay That's the first VCR, huh? That's the first VCR. Wow. The great thing, you know, it was, uh, uh, wow. that reel of tape, it's, yeah. that reel of tape was about $200, and it'd go an hour. This, of course, this is the next model that came out. This is uh, early 60s, and VR 1200, and you can tell the main difference is a lot of it's been tra it's been transistorized, which made it a lot smaller. Mm -hmm. It's still 1,200 pounds. It's not for the yeah. faint of heart. Yeah. These cameras were early black and whites, and they were used well, several. This particular one came from Channel 8 in Dallas. It was one of their studio cameras, probably originally, and then went onto their mobile. Yeah. Marconi's were made in England, and the reason what? Yes, Ooh. that 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 camera was used in the filming of uh, Doctor Who. Yes, our That's granddaughter's it. favorite show for years. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah, and he used to watch it with her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hmm. But uh, the reason these were used in the U.S. is because. NBC was tied to RCA. Okay. They were all, they were, I guess RCA owned them. So CBS and ABC didn't like using RCA stuff, uh -huh. even though RCA yeah. made a lot, and sometimes they had to do it anyhow. But but this was an alternative camera. Yeah. Huh. And as we step to a little, this was an RCA camera came out in the late 40s early 50s and it's it's tube you can tell it's yeah. <laughs> look there's Oswald himself <laughs> yes most likely set up by the CIA wait don't say that <laughs> This camera, this was a GE, but it was uh, popular in Texas. A lot of stations used it. This came out in the late 50s, and this particular one was there when Oswald was shot. Oh. 
down in the basement of the sheriff's office. Yeah. Wait a minute. Are you saying this it's actual one yes. was there? Yes. So are you saying this was the one that filmed him getting Oswald being shot or no? Yes. I mean, we don't. There had two of them there. Oh, okay. I'm sure it was pointed at yeah. that. Yeah. So, you know, you don't know exactly which one was mm. called up at the time. But right. CIA. This is located in Kilgore, in case you need to come here and get it. <laughs> See, we, we didn't know. Chuck actually bought it many years ago. Uh -huh. uh, he had a business in Dallas, and he was interested in this stuff. And mm. Somebody came in Monday morning and told him, did you go to that garage sale or such and such place? Yeah. And had a bunch of studio equipment to check light. He said, yeah. well, no, I didn't know anything about it. Wow. He went down there to check, and they, they still had this camera that hadn't wow. sold. And he worked for, when he was in, going to college, he worked for KRLD TV as a uh -huh. cameraman. And so he, he had a connection, you know, it was something he was interested in, so he bought yeah. it and put it in his office as yeah. a conversation piece. And then later brought it here and didn't think too much about it. And, uh, the Six Floor Museum came to him and said, do you have such and such a camera? And he said, well, yes. And he said, do you know what it's used for? And he said, well, yes. It was originally a Channel 4 studio camera. And then later it went on their mobile unit. And last thing, it was used for doing the church service at First Baptist Church downtown. He said, they said, well, no, that's not what we did. They, they had researched it and found out it was used in the yeah. So it spent time a year or so up at the school book, you know, the Sixth Floor Museum. And right. Then it went to Washington to one of the big museums up there. Yeah, and yeah. Then it's back to us. Wow. <laughs> so do you know how much he paid for it at the garage sale? It wasn't much. Yeah. It didn't sell, so I'm yeah, sure he didn't yeah. pay much. Well, you know, it was memorabilia for him. I'm imagining that was a lot it. of people would look at it and say, I got no use for that thing. <laughs> well, the size of that camera there, though, Mark. Right? Yes, it's well, now we're getting into color. Oh, okay. This was RCA pioneered color. Uh huh. And the system that we had came out in December 1953. This camera was built in 1954. It's the 40th built by RCA. So it was just a very wow. early color camera. 350 pounds from here up. So I mean, it's not for mm. the faint of heart. And of course, right. there's a lot more that goes with it. it. Had this in the studio, it would have had this in the control room, as well as some more racks of stuff. But And they took it out in the field, which is pretty amazing. And originally it had, this one had three cables. If you watch those, you can see. It's in the early version that had three cables right mm -hmm. there. This okay. is in one of the studios. See how it has the three big cables? Yeah. So it wasn't easy to move around. <laughs> and you can see him carrying it into a stadium there. It took several people to Okay, I finally made it on the radio. Let's see.
Let's, let's play uh, Boogie on Rag A Woman. Stevie Wonder. No, I hate Stevie Wonder. We don't want to play Stevie Wonder. Someone else is playing. These are commercials. Right? Yes, those were commercials. Alright, let's just play commercials. That's how we make money anyway. Forget about music. You know, oh, wait, there's another one. Sugar Mountain by Neil Young. I hate, hate, hate Neil Young. Uh, there's actually nothing I want to play. Why does it keep switching so fast? All right, here we are. So today, Tuesday, but it's re Joe, come on! I know. It's going to be 78, 79, 74, 76, 74, and that's it. But you can see down here in Texas, it's going to be really chilly at 54. No wonder they have so much problems. All right, so... Welcome to Fake News. Today we're going to lie to you. We're going to start off by lying to you about COVID-19. Oh, wait, 19. I'm not supposed to say that. That's a lie. January 6th was all a lie. Uh, in fact, everything's a lie. You are watching a lie. Subscribe to the show. Be one of 52. This is radio station equipment. Audio boards of all different ages. The one up there came out of NBC News in New York. Hmm. Which one? This one? This one. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I may have seen it. I'm just kidding. The one back here came out of KLBJ in Austin, which is a big station down in Austin. It used to be owned by Lady Bird, the Johnson family. Which has nothing to do with the movie, Lady Bird. So this was what again? Came out of KLBJ in Austin, the soundboard. Okay. Well, it's a radio station, so. All right. This mixed together the sound from all the inputs, the cart machines and the turntables. Yeah, I don't think I'm ever going to be on the radio. I always <laughs> wanted to. That dream's, uh, that dream's falling by. And this, this is some more tra transmitter control equipment. That was when radio stations started uh, automating and you can see the carousel that you put the carts in and it would change them automatically. Like, automatically. Down below it was the same type thing except it was a linear one where it pulled the carts out, plug them into the machine. A lot of this came about when in the 50s and 60s when FM got bigger. Mm -hmm. And uh, the FCC did not want stations, if they were both AM and FM, which most of them were, didn't want them to play the same thing on both. So oh. instead of having two sets of disc jockeys yeah. and all, they started automating at least one of the stations, one usually the FM. Because mm -hmm. most FMs back then were more classical or... Yeah. Elevator music or something, right, you know. Right. So it, it led itself to that. Unit back behind you. I like a late a radio station down in Houston bought it, brought it in recently. It's KTRH, which is K is the normal call sign for. Historically, it's kind of been the call, the start of the call signs for anything west of the Mississippi. But TRH stood for the Rice Hotel, uh -huh. and it's a big hotel in Houston. It's, it must have been there close to 100 years because the station's just about 100 years old. Mm -hmm. And back in the 20s and 30s, they used this. They did a ballroom program from the Rice Hotel. It's a big band and ballroom. Yeah. And this was the mixer that did it, and that was one of the microphones they used, a condenser microphone, actually. Yeah. 
but very heavy. Probably Elvis wouldn't be up there because he might fall off the stage trying to rock that around like he did. Yeah. Oh, the ESPN Chuck. Back in the day when people liked ESPN. Now that woke, woke ESPN. Original ESPN production vehicle. Oh. When they first started. Oh, really? They had three of these made, and this is one of them. Wow. This was when I could watch ESPN without puking. Uh huh. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Can I go on there? Yes. Just watch your step. And like you see it this here. one and this one are two different entrances, right? You can't. Well, the main stuff's up front. This is what I'd call the engineering area. It's uh huh. Probably a couple of engineers were back here making sure everything was operating. They also had a tape machine or two back there and recorded the show. Of course, it was going out live by satellite at the same time. In the center, you can see where this little sports thing is, there's right. a room there, and it has an audio board in it. It has a window that looks out on the front, and then the front has all the cameras came in there and had switchers and had a couch where the director sat. And next to him, there's a Chiron. And that was the first time. And this came, the Chiron came out about the same time that this did, 1979. They could put labels on the screen. That was the first time they could do that oh. real time instead of holding a card up yeah, from yeah. a camera or something which was a big step forward, mm. first down. You can see the inside. Around the world as well. It takes an interview. We did, we did. Yeah, so this is CSPN, huh? So it worked. Well, look at this. You are alive. Switch out. Uh, ESPN. See, let's get this thing. I'm just looking at all the monitors. I'm not allowed to show any of this. Google. But we can do it on Rumble. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel on Rumble, do that. Or do it on YouTube.
Check out this bus. We're going to go in there. This is a... Because I saw this. This, this is pretty cool. It's a 1949 Dumont, again Dumont, yeah. production vehicle. And it's pretty much the same as the ESPN van. It's just 30 years before. And uh, it was actually built for Channel 8 in Dallas. And Channel 8 has a connection to Kilgore because the original person whose money started Channel 8 was Tom Potter, who was one of the rich oil men from the boom here. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, his money went up there and started Channel 8, uh, Channel 8 mm -hmm. in the late 40s, which, you know, of course, TV was new and modern and right. everybody wanted to get into it. Right. And he actually had commissioned this van to be made. And it was the first one that Dumont made. They made, I don't know how many, but a number of them for stations. Uh, but you can see it because they used it in their advertising pictures. FAA, which is what it is now. Mm -hmm. This is what the van looked like. Oh. When well, when did it look like this? When it was found. <laughs> oh, so you guys made it like this. Mm -hmm. Wow. No, it didn't. It didn't come like this. No. <laughs> look at the air conditioner. Something like yeah, yeah, look at that. In probably the 60s, we figured. Because wow. originally it wasn't air conditioned. It's 1949. Wow, the difference. And did it come with this guy? No. Oh, no? I think he's a nice addition to it, though, don't you? Like? Yeah, yeah, because he looks like the original driver. I took yeah. a picture of him. I'm going to send it to Daniel, and I'm going to say, your father decided to train to be a bus driver again. Yeah. Real funny, Linda. <laughs> oh, pretty cool inside the bus. Oh, wait. He's doing a good job. You should hire him. Good. Well, I'm too much. Be careful if you step back. It's a step down there. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Really? Yeah. As you go, be careful. There's a step down on your right hand. They go, oh, yeah, I'm going to grab a hold of one of his enemies and rip him off the wall. I want this bus. Yeah. Everyone needs one. Okay, we're going out. Nice, huh? Yeah, it's gorgeous. Does it still run now, right? Yes. It does? Wow. What kind of gas mileage is it got? I'm sure it's... Not good. Gallon a mile or something. Yeah, yeah.